Us now to continue our conversation is California Senator Alex Padilla, who sits on the Judiciary Committee. Senator, it's always great to see you. I thank you for your time. You know, we've kind of all been hearing bits and pieces about this agreement. Your colleagues are hammering out, including giving the president and DHS the authority to literally shut down the border when encounters reach a certain number for a week. What's your position on what you've seen so far? Uh, well, good to be back with you, Jose. And uh, let me just say the frustration continues because there's nothing we've actually seen thus far. Uh, the agreement, uh, you know, if, if it's even at that point, certainly the language of it has not been shared with other lawmakers for review, for analysis. So we're operating based on what we are hearing. Uh, and a lot of what we're hearing is troublesome because uh, a lot of it is, frankly, Trump's playbook uh, back in action, a series of policies that have been proven to not work. Uh, you can call it Title 42, the you know presidential authority to quote unquote close the border. Uh, we know that didn't work under Trump and we can't expect it to work again. Nobody's arguing that we don't need to modernize our immigration laws as a whole, but our Republican colleagues who insist on shutting down the border or quote unquote driving the numbers down aren't willing to really engage in the root cause uh, conversation if we're genuine and sincere about addressing the number of people coming to the United States either seeking asylum or seeking economic opportunity, let's have that responsible, thoughtful conversation. But that's not what we're hearing from negotiators. You know, Senator, you and I have for the longest time, even before you were uh, in, in the Senate, uh, when you were an official in, in, in California, about the importance of representation and about being at the places where discussions are carried out. And you are the first Latino senator in the state of California, which tells you a lot. But I'm just wondering, where is the representation on this conversation going? I haven't seen it uh, in the Senate, I haven't seen it in the House, and I haven't seen it uh, out of the White House. Am I wrong? Uh, no, that's been one of the big frustrations for a number of members of Congress, including but not limited to the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, that not one of the members of the CHC are part of the negotiating group. I'd also underscore that not a border, there's not a border state Democrat that's at the table either. But knowing that the stakes are so high, I've insisted on working and communicating directly with my colleagues, both Democrats and Republicans, to try to stay on top of what is being considered in close to real time and offer solutions, he'll say, you know, it's important to remind the public it is not unlawful for somebody seeking, uh, fleeing an authoritarian regime, think Cuba, think Venezuela, to come to the United States seeking asylum. Uh, we shouldn't gut the asylum system as we know. We should fund it better, more hearing officers, more judges, so that people who qualify can get approved more quickly in the matter of weeks and months, not years and years, get their work permit so they can support themselves and move on. And those who don't return home more quickly not leave them in limbo for folks coming to the United States seeking economic opportunity. You know, I keep hearing from employers across sectors of the economy that we have a workforce shortage. So let's grow the work visa categories and connect people wanting to work with employers who need those workers. But again, these are the types of thoughtful solutions that we don't hear uh, at the table in these negotiations. Uh, another thing that's been lost in the shuffle here is any sort of relief for dreamers, for essential workers, for farm workers who are already here contributing to the economy, contributing to the security of our nation. Yeah, I mean, the 11 million plus that have been vetted in so many ways by being here and participating in our economy with many with U.S. born children and the dreamers, 200, at least 750,000 people who are being completely ignored on this. But, you know, uh, Senator, you're talking about uh, some of those kind of outside influences. Donald Trump is looking to torpedo any agreement. Uh, and, and it seems and like so a number of House so and Senate Republicans are following his lead. And Jose, so there you have it. Have Republicans been genuine all along or not? Because you can't have it both ways. You can't say that what we have at the border is a crisis uh, and we have an urgent need to act and then publicly say that, well, well, let's wait till November and see how the election goes to try to do something about it. You can't have it both ways where Senate Republicans, some, uh, want to make sure that Secretary Mayorkas is in the room helping negotiate and craft a deal, where in the House, they're moving to impeach him. You can't have it both ways, and it seems like increasingly Republicans are just playing political games. You know, in the prior segments, you had what's happening in Texas uh, with Governor Abbott literally deploying state guards uh, to keep 
federal officials from doing their job and securing the border. So uh, all they want is chaos. They're certainly creating a whole lot of it, uh, but let's not let them get away with it. Yeah, as the Eagle Pass uh, representative talked about, it's a political show. And unfortunately, in political shows, the people that aren't benefited are the people. Senator Alex Padilla, I thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Jose. Hasta pronto.